Okay, so hopefully you have already looked at this exercise. Uh, I will now go through and explain each part and tell you what the right answer is, if you don't know. Okay, so the idea of the first exercise is very simple. What part of speech is the underlying word? Okay, so sentence number one. Before the fire, there had been a plague, the like of which had not been known before and has not been seen since. Okay, so we've got a couple of uses of before here. So that should tell you, first of all, that they're probably not going to be the same part of speech, otherwise I wouldn't have given you both. So if we break it up before the fire, clearly the fire is a noun phrase, okay? Uh, so the word before just sitting there in front of a noun phrase will be a preposition, okay? It's a preposition which links the noun phrase to everything else, okay? So here, before, you can think of expressions like on the fire, in the fire, at the fire. Here it's before the fire. There had been a plague, the like of which had not been known. So like, obviously, is a word which you know uh, very well as a verb. Uh, increasingly, however, like is being used as a noun, such as uh, how many likes do you have for your profile picture or whatever. Uh, but here, the, the idea of this is, is to try to make you see that a word which appears in an unfamiliar way uh, can still be identified very easily because it's the like. So we know the is an article, is a determiner. We know that it must go before a noun. Okay. So even if you've never seen or heard of like being used as a noun before, it should be clear to you that if it comes after the word the, then it must be a noun. Okay. So the like of which simply means... Uh, Things, things like that. Right? So things like that had not been known before. So the, the like of it. Okay. Had not been known before. So before this time is not sitting before a noun form. So it's not a preposition. Okay. What it's actually doing is it's describing the verb phrase. It's a whole verb phrase here. Uh, had not been known. Okay. That's a one verb phrase. Had not been known. And it's been described by the word before. So the word before is an adverb. Okay. And has not been seen since. So this structure is the same. Okay. Has not been seen since. So the since describes when, the way in which it has not been seen. So since is also an adverb. Okay. So we've got before as a preposition, like as a noun, and then before and since are both adverbs. Okay. Sentence number two. It's a common failing to suppose that we are not like other men, that we are not as other people are. Okay. So, it's a common failing. We've got A, which tells us that it's introducing a noun phrase. So, common failing is a noun phrase. However, it's made up of two parts. Okay. Common and failing. Common is an adjective, usually. Um, there is also a noun, common, but that means something quite, a, quite different. Uh, so we're talking about a failing. So here we've got what looks like it could be a verb form with ing on the end, but we should be quite used to the fact that there are many nouns in English which have the ing form on the end. So a common failing is a noun phrase made up of common an adjective and failing as a noun. Okay. Okay. Now this the second part of this one is a little more a little more difficult. We are not like other men. We are not as other people are. Okay. So these two phrases basically have the same meaning, right? So we're not like other men, we're not as other people are. So we're not the same as other people. Both of them uh, mean the same thing but they're constructed in different ways. So again, you need to look at the whole phrase, not just the individual word, okay? Again, you, you will think of like uh, and think that this, this should be uh, a verb or possibly a noun as we've just had, but in fact, it's neither. So what we have here is like other men, other men is a noun form, 
right? We should recognize straight away that men is going to be a noun, okay? So what we've got here is a phrase uh, with one word linking a noun phrase. So like, in fact, here is working as a preposition, okay? Which might seem a little strange, like is not a typical preposition, but it works as a preposition in such phrases when we say something is like something, okay? It's just the same as saying something is as something, okay? Which, if you compare with the Polish, actually this, this seems to make sense. Um, but I'm not going to, uh, to bother you with my, with my Polish. Okay, and then we get the second way of saying the same thing, that we are not as other people are. Now here there's a change because clearly if we just skip to the end, the word are is a verb, right? There's no, no question about that. So what we have here is not as linking a noun phrase, other people, in which case it would be a preposition. What we have is as linking uh, this whole section, other people are, Okay, which is a clause with a noun phrase, other people, and a verb, are. So when we have these little words linking clauses, it's not going to be a preposition, it's going to be a conjunction. Okay, so as here is working as a conjunction because it's joining we are not and other people are. These are two separate clauses, each with their own verb. Okay. So we had common adjective, failing noun, uh, like as a preposition, men as a noun, as as a conjunction, and are as a verb. Okay. Okay. As your doctor, I must warn you that the results of taking this drug may be very serious. Okay. So here we've got as with the noun phrase your doctor. Okay. So as is going to be a preposition. I must warn you. The results of taking may be, so here you can see that in this sentence there are two clauses, there are two separate verb structures. Okay, So when we say something like, I must warn you that, I must tell you that, this that is a conjunction because it links these two separate clauses together. Okay. Then we've got the followed by results, so results we can see uh, quite clearly uh, is a noun. Of will always be a preposition. Okay. And then you've got uh, taking. This drug may be very serious. So we'll just go all the way to the end first of all. This drug may be very serious. Serious uh, describing the noun results. So serious is obviously an adjective. Okay. Uh, taking. So taking is one of these slightly tricky words because taking here is a gerund which sometimes seems to be behaving as a noun, sometimes seems to be behaving as a verb. Okay. Uh, when we have of, okay, so of is working as a preposition, so it must be followed by a noun, okay? So obviously there are situations where taking works as a verb, uh, but here if it comes after of, then it's going to be a noun. So this will be true in any situation where you have a preposition coming before a gerund, then you have to treat it as a noun, right? Prepositions can't link verbs, okay? So we can say in doing something, by doing something, of doing something, then this, uh, what it seems to be a verb form, must then be treated as a noun. Okay, so we had, uh, oh, I missed out doctor, didn't I? Uh, as is a preposition, doctor is obviously a noun, that is a conjunction, results, noun, of, preposition, taking, noun, serious, adjective. Okay, number four, growth in weight results in the development of some muscles and fat. Okay, well, growth is the noun from grow. Okay, that should be obvious. In obviously is a preposition, so it must be followed by 
another noun, so we've got weight. Results here, this is not a noun from, as in the previous uh, example, but here this is a verb, something results in something else. The must be followed by a noun, so it's the development. Okay, so development is a noun. And then we've got of some muscles and fat. So again, we've got of, which we know is a preposition. So that tells us that what comes next is a nominal or noun form. Uh, some muscles. So as I mentioned uh, just in the last video, some, in this case where it's used with a noun, some will be a determiner. Okay, some muscles. And fat here, we're talking about some Fat. We're not talking about somebody being fat, we're talking about some fat, so fat here is a noun. Okay, so we've got growth as a noun, weight as a noun, results as a verb, development as a noun, sum as a determiner, and fat is a noun. Okay, number five, that man over there is the one that I met on holiday. Okay, so here we've just got two words underlined, they're both that. That man, we're using the word that with a noun, so that is a determiner. Which man? That man. This man? No, that man. It's determining which man, okay? So that man is the one. And then we have a separate clause with a separate verb, I met on holiday, okay? So this that, the second that, is a conjunction. He's the one. I met on holiday, and these are put together with the conjunction that in the middle. So we've got that as a determiner, that as a conjunction. Okay, and the last example. You must help one another. Half the class is failing the course. Okay, I hope that's not the case. Um, so a couple of interesting things to say here. Th these are things which I mentioned in the last video. So one another. Okay, so this is a pronoun. And it's treated as one item, okay? It's not that there's one word one and then another word another, which you're supposed to somehow uh, decipher separately. These are treated as one item uh, semantically. That they, they don't have separate meaning. They're not two words which come together, bringing different meanings and then form uh, the meaning one another. The word one another... It, you, know, you could write it as one word, it wouldn't make any difference. There's no way of dividing uh, these two things. So one another is an example of uh, two words written, always written together and treated as though they were one word. Okay, we will see some other examples of that as we go through the course. Okay. And finally, half the class. So this is what I've just been talking about. Uh, we've got the class, the is clearly a determiner bringing in the noun form class. Half is sitting there before the determiner, so half is a predeterminer. Okay, so we've got one another as a pronoun and half as a predeterminer. Okay, all right, so we're going to go back now with the next video. I will just talk a little bit about nouns, which will allow you to do the next two exercises. That is basically the end of the exercises on parts of speech. So we will do revision on that later on. But if you're still uh, not sure about parts of speech, if some of what I've said doesn't make any sense, then please do get in touch. As I said, I, I will try to send out some, some notes about this as well. Uh, but it's very important that you are able to deal with parts of speech um, because we will then refer to the parts of speech as we go through the rest of the course. Uh, and parts of speech will certainly be in the final exam, which you need to pass. Okay? All right, so I'm going to stop there and uh, move on to the next section of theory, which will be quite short.